Hello, Scroll Tribe 2.0. So we're doing things a little differently today. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm in my Jeep. I'm in a parking lot because my kids stayed home from school today, not feeling well. Yesterday we got home and um, she was on the couch and I'm looking at her. And as a mother, you never want to tell your daughter, you look like shit. But I'm looking at her and I'm like, she doesn't look like she feels good. And sure enough, she's like, my throat hurts and I'm getting kind of stuffy. And her eyes are all like, uh, like this, right? And I touch her forehead. She has no fever, whatever. For dinner, she wanted tomato soup. It's not generally what my child wants, especially when um, grilled cheese sandwich is not an option to go with it. But she wanted tomato soup with a couple pieces of chicken in it. And she didn't eat it all which also isn't normal. Normally she'll eat everything, whatever. So this morning when she woke up or before she woke up, I told the man, I said, I bet money. We got a kid staying home today. I can guarantee she's going to be like, mommy, I don't feel good. And sure as shit, 7.15, she sends me a text. It just says, mom. And I said, I know. She goes, I feel like crap. I said, I know. I thought so last night. And she goes, my throat still hurts. I'm stuffy. It's making my stomach hurt. And I was like, well, do you have a fever? Like, is your head hot? She's like, no. And I was like, does your head hurt? She's like, no. And I said, do you think you can tough it out and go to school? And she said, well, can I go in late? Can I like miss the first period, which is banned or whatever? And I was like, yes. And then I, this is at 715, right? Normally she gets up at 730 and we walk out the door by 830. She's got like an hour to shower, get ready, whatever, you know, piddle around as my mother would say. And so at about 745, I, I, I went to her room and I said, hey, if you're going to go in late, you still have to get up and take a shower and, you know, eat some breakfast before we go. I got her some, um, which I don't always want to do, but if this is what she'll eat before school. I got her some of those Jimmy Dean breakfast bowls, the ones that have like the sausage and the bacon and the eggs and the potatoes and stuff in it. Cause she'll eat those when I try to make her breakfast someday. If she's like, Oh, I don't want it. No, it tastes homemade. You know how kids are. So I got her the Jimmy Dean bowls. And I tried to bribe her out of bed with a Jimmy Dean bowl. And she was like, no. She goes, I'm going to stay here till the last second until you make me go to school. And then I was like, do you really feel that bad? She's like, yeah. And she sounded awful. So I was like, all right, stay home. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And I didn't want to displace said sick child in order to record today for, you know, 2.0 or for Squirrel Tribe. So I have been living it up in the Jeep. I will say, though, I did go to Target. And I got her these things because I don't want to give her like medicine, medicine. And these are mostly like juices and things like that. Um, but there is a little bit of pectin for oral demulcent. I don't even know what that means, but I'm hoping this will help her. It is an organic throat soothing pops for kids. It's for three, three years old and up. So I'm sure she'll be fine with it, but I didn't want to, they had a mucinex, like a throat spray to help kind of like numb the pain. I gave her a Tylenol slash Motrin last night, just to be on the safe side. And it did help her sleep a little bit, but I don't want to give her anything crazy. So I got these for her. And while I was inside good old Target, I got it. Wait, hold on. There we go. This is the stuff you guys kept telling me to get for the whole acid reflux slash possible GERD thing issue that I have going on. I will say I have been eating Chobani, Ch Chobani, is that how you say it? Uh, the Greek yogurt with the fruit on the bottom, the peach ones. Uh, I showed you guys, I've been eating one of those a day since, uh, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. And I have not had heartburn all week long. I'm very, very excited about that. So I've had those. And then when I feel like maybe possibly there's the potential for heartburn, I've eaten a banana and that has helped immensely as well. So I've had no fried foods today. The man and I and our friend T, Tiano, we went and did like a four mile walk. And afterwards we got some food. And with my food, there should have been fries. I got a Cuban sandwich because I love Cuban sandwiches. And there should have been fries, but I asked them to swap it out for the Yukon Gold mashed potatoes at Tommy Bahama instead. So... I'm very proud of myself. Little baby changes, right? Um, mashed potatoes, still a lot of carbs, but I need my carbs for the day. So I got those instead of the fries and that made me happy. So sick kid, got her some stuff, got me the apple cider vinegar to do. And that is that. I have a package that I picked up at the UPS store today that I was going to open for you guys and then go through more of the Hervé Lucindy scents because I have so many more to go through. But being displaced today and Jeep ridden or Jeep ridden no jeep eh, like bedridden right so jeep ridden sure whatever being here 
I don't want to try to play with scissors in the Jeep and open up a package, especially because people are driving by and walking around and I'm going to look extra special in here trying to open up packages and be like, oh my gosh, look, and then sniffing things and being all excited. I didn't, I don't want to be that person in the Jeep in the corner of the parking lot that they felt they might need to call the authorities on because I'm clearly like wigging out in here. So we'll save that for tomorrow. Maybe what's tomorrow, Friday. Hopefully the kid feels better tomorrow. And when I left to come over here, I asked her, I said, on a scale of one to 10, what are you at? And she was like, mm, four and a half or five. I said, where were you this morning? She was like 12. And I was like, okay, so that's a plus. She had yogurt when she got up. She drank the rest of the organic orange juice that I had for her. She drank a bunch of water. And then um, while we were gone on our walk, she made pizza rolls in the oven. So obviously she's feeling a little bit better to make pizza rolls. So that's a plus. Hopefully tomorrow that means she's at perfect whatever and going back to school. And tomorrow we will do the video on 2.0 with the um, package that I got and the the uh, Hervé Lucindy scents. So of course where I'm parked, somebody just pulled in directly across from me. Y'all know how I get anxious when people are looking at me. And so this lowered truck from Texas I'm really hoping they're getting out, but the fact that they are now eating their bag of McDonald's says that they are not getting out. So I feel real awkward recording when people can like literally make eye contact with me if I just look over to the right because my windows are not tinted to the point where you can't see in. And you would think I'd be okay with this. How long have we been doing this y'all? Two years? You would think that by now my anxiety and whatever would be gone, but no. That will be what I determine my level of YouTube success when I can talk to myself in in front of a camera and people look at me and I don't give two shits about it because I am not there yet. I do not consider myself successful on YouTube all because I cannot talk. Now, I could people could think that I'm just sitting here having, you know, a FaceTime call conversation, but because I know that's not the case, it gives me weird anxiety like I'm already starting to sweat. I have my Jeep running and the AC on, but I can feel my hands already getting clammy and starting to sweat and if I get a little bit redder, it's because there's two people sitting there stuffing their face with McDonald's french fries, which look really good, side note, and the dude keeps looking up. And because of how my anxiety works, I'm like, oh, he's looking at me, he's looking at me. I don't know. He could be looking past the Jeep or just looking at the Jeep because it's a badass looking Jeep. But either way, anxiety has done kicked in. Y'all see, I'm trying to like hide over here. I'm like, if I can't see them, then they can't see me. I'm just going to hide in the corner over here in front of the camera and there will be no eye contact. That makes it look even more awkward. I'm fully, fully aware. But all right, let me, let me, let me just get up in here like this and just hide in the, in the corner. So the man and I were talking earlier and he was like, we were talking about the gym because I told him, I was like, I don't really know how to quantify my success which is a really stupid word to use, I think, but success in the gym right now, because I, I've been looking back at pictures and you guys may have seen some of them on Instagram and I've been looking back on pictures and what my body has gone through in the past 15 years, technically, um, from, well, honestly, no, from high school on in high school, I was like 135 pounds. And then I tore everything in my right knee. And then I started dating somebody. And then all we did was go out to eat and eat pizza and whatever. And I got really fat. Right. And then when the man and I got together, I lost a bunch of weight, but not like a lot. I was like 170. Right. I was probably like close to 200. And then we got together and then I was like 170. So he lo he's loved me through so many different bodies. It's ridiculous. Um, so then I was like at 170 and then I got pregnant and I went up to 232 pounds. And then I was unpregnant because I had a baby. I squoezed this massive human being out, you know, a hole the size of uh, a watermelon out the hole the size of a ping pong ball. Well, technically that gets bigger. So it's more like a softball. Either way, big ass head, little ass opening. Not a not a great combination. Stitches were involved. TMI is OK, ladies. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I've had like a lot of up and downs, right? And when I first started working out, I was doing cardio, like crazy cardio. I was on the stair climber for an hour, hour and a half a day. I was counting macros. I wasn't eating any carbs. I was like, no, I can only have fruits and vegetables, very, very few fruits and vegetables and um, protein and stuff like that. And I lost a lot of weight. I got down to like maybe 135, 140, but I was like skinny. I was like skinny and I don't really like skinny. I like to have a little bit of oomph on me. Like I want to be just a hint intimidating. And I felt like when I was skinny, I was, I wasn't intimidating at all. And I like to, I like to have a little, I don't know. I don't know. It makes me feel happy to have a little intimidation factor to me. So started lifting weights. Right. And then I got up to like 165, I think was my, when I was at my most muscular, um, I was, uh, at a lean 165 and I loved it. And then, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. Then COVID hit and all my willpower and everything went 
in the crapper and gained a bunch of weight, moved to the beach, gained even more weight because we went out to eat all the time and, you know, fried shrimp and fried fish and french fries and hush puppies and um, drinks and everything else and got up to when we were on our trip over the summer we went to go horseback riding i had to stand on a scale to figure out how like what my weight was and it said 195 and i was like oh how dare you no it mentally i am still like 170 max what are you your scale's broken and i was like it's off by 25 pounds it wasn't i just put on a shit ton of weight and hadn't realized it right so now back in the gym doing all these things when i started in the gym i told you guys that the scale was at like 189. the scale now is at 192. According to the scale, I weigh more, but here, here's the thing. I will not step on the scale again because mentally I know that muscle weighs more than fat. And I know for a fact that I have put on muscle. I mean, I don't, you can't really see, there's not, nothing showing yet because I'm still got too much fluff over it, but I can tell it in my thighs. I can tell it in my arms, my, my triceps, everything else. I put on muscle, muscle weighs more than fat. So even though I started at 189 and now 192, some days I want to be like, oh no, it's not working. And then I want to like sabotage myself, right? Because I am an emotional eater. I'm like, I want to go to Target and while nobody's looking, I want to buy an entire thing of friggin' Swiss cake rolls and Swiss Miss, you know, the little chocolate ones with the uh, filling in the middle and just eat all of them and pretend it didn't happen. That's my toxic trait, if you will, is my emotional overeating. And these two are about to hit each other. Okay. Um, sorry, this car was turning and this car was coming and it did not look like it was going to work out well for the front end of either of them. Um, I am a emotional eater, like nobody's business It's absolutely ridiculous. And a lot of times I am an emotional eater from the things I do to myself, like mentally, it's not outside forces. It's me getting in my own head and effing myself up. Right. So I'm at the gym yesterday and there's, we went at a less busy time. No, yesterday. When did we go yesterday? Was yesterday less busy time or yes. Yesterday was busy, busy day before was less busy. Yesterday was very busy. There were a lot of people in there and I'm still in the, the, the part of my getting back on track where I can get intimidated in the gym. Like Kevin goes, you know, Kevin goes to the gym for Kevin. I go to the gym for me. When Kevin's in the gym, he's not paying attention to anybody. When I'm in the gym, Unfortunately, I pay attention to people, but only because I like to like watch people's form and see what they're doing and then decide if I want to try something new or whatnot. But then I let myself sometimes, sometimes get in my own head about the fact that I, I don't feel like I could do a certain exercise or it's been so long since I've done that or I don't want people looking at me while I do that because what if I do it wrong or what if I look a certain type of way or whatever else. And I can get in my head sometimes, right? But the thing is... Um, there's a bunch of personal trainers in our gym and I can't tell if they're on steroids. I can't tell if any of them actually do anything. Some of them look great. Other ones, I'm not quite sure. It feels like maybe they're just doing it to, because they, they, I see them training these people and I'm like, but they're not doing anything. They're just sitting on these machines doing nothing. But then I realize some people don't really want the trainer for weight loss. They want the trainer to have somebody to talk to, somebody just to have a conversation with. And so I understand that, you know, but, um, so yesterday in the gym, I went, I've been going heavier on weights than I, than I had been the first couple weeks we were back in the gym because I, I had it in my brain that I couldn't do it. And lately I'm like, screw that. Yes, you can just go heavy. And if you're sore later, good. If you're not go heavier next time. And so I've been going heavier in the gym. And when I went to Sam's club Tuesday, guess Tuesday, I told you guys that I bought some shorts. Well, the last time I went to Sam's club and I bought Eddie Bauer shorts, I bought a size 12. Okay. I used to be a four, five, six, seven, like in that range is where I lived most of the time, but a size 12 and they fit great. Right. I bought another pair in some other brand. I don't even remember what brand it was. And I got a size 10. And when I got home, um, previously and tried on the size 10, I could not get them to button. There was like this much space of non button ability. Right. So Tuesday, when I went back to Sam's club, I completely forgot that I had bought those shorts in a size 10 and return them at some point. And I completely forgot that I had already bought these shorts in a size 10 and I rebought them in a size 10. And I got home and yesterday I decided to try on the shorts that I told you guys about and I tried them on and they buttoned perfectly. And then my brain goes, ma'am, ma'am, small victory here. I need you to focus on the small victory because again, the scale is moving upwards, which should mentally just freak me out, right? Scales moving upwards, but those shorts now that had this much space where I could not button them now button just fine. 
this much space to me is a huge deal. It means that although the scale is going up, I am clearly losing inches in places. I would like inches to go away. There's some places inches need to stay. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's not on me. That's on him. He better not lose those inches anyway. So I was really excited about that. So when Kevin and I earlier today were talking about, you know, success, he was like, you know, when you're in corporate America, success is um, the promotion or how much you get paid or if you have a title behind your name or all these different things, right? Success for he and I now is totally different because we're not in corporate America. We are YouTube content creators, which I still, I don't like that phrase. I don't create. I just talk. I'm a YouTube content talker. I'm a talker. I get paid for a living to talk, which is absolutely amazing. I, I still think my mom's like, you need to go talk to all your teachers who are on your report cards, talks too much and be like, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know, so, um, our, our level, our, our degree of trying to figure out what success is, is totally different now, and especially in the gym too, because in the gym before I, I mean, I was working eight to 12 hours a day, lifting heavy weights for my regular job, like moving really heavy stuff all day long, running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to get a job done and doing all these different things and then going to the gym afterwards. Now I don't do that. So we're in the gym, maybe hour, hour and a half a day. Everything else comes down to how we eat and, and whatnot. And so I'm not going to see the same results nearly as quickly as I did before. Plus also you got to add in hormones. The fact that I'm 42 now, it's not going to be the same as when I was 32 or whatever else. So my, 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 um, no, not level. What's the right word? My scale for success. Sure. We'll go with that. My scale for success now cannot be the same as my scale for success at 32. And I think a lot of people forget that. And I'm talking to all of y'all because I feel like I'm not the only one who does this where you compare now to then you can't compare now in anything to then in anything. I mean, when it comes to anything at all, because the last couple of years has thrown everything through a loop in my personal opinion, but you can't compare where you are now in life with where you were before, whether it's monetary, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, because those it's, it's very hard because then all it does when you try to compare yourself to what you were or where you were or what was, it makes it much harder for you to appreciate where you are and where you could be going, where what path you're on, right? So even though I look at pictures of where I was a couple of years ago and I think to myself, God, I can't believe I let myself get to where I am now from where I was. It's all on me. You know, I can blame it on COVID. I can blame it on everything else, but I made the decision not to work out. I made the decision to eat the things I did. I made all those decisions. It's it's solely on me. So now I'm figuring out my level of success is going to be based on daily, just how I feel about myself. Um, whether it's visually in a mirror, whether it's, you know, in the clothes that I put on, whether it's in the effort that I put out in the gym and other places, whether it's, um, how happy, you know, the kid is and the man is and everything else, different levels of success for different things in my life. And I think that if we, if we like, as people look at things as you can only get better, it makes it much easier not to crap on ourselves. If we have like a little mistake or a little mix up or a, a mishap, like if I tomorrow decide to eat an entire cake, it's not like I have failed and I'm no longer successful. It just means that I had a small little, small little hiccup and we need to get back on track. And then, you know, you're still a success for recognizing the hiccup and for getting back on track. And the kid and I were talking about that a couple of days ago, how if she gets a bad grade on a math test, you know, but she did great on all her homework, but her math test isn't that great. Okay. You had a hiccup. Your math test didn't go as well as you wanted it to go. Keep that in mind. Look at what you missed. Look at what you did wrong. Understand what it was. Practice on those. And then on the next thing you do, you'll have a success because you'll know where, where your problem areas were trying to explain to her that one bad grade is not the end of the world. One amazing grade isn't also the, the end all be all either. It's kind of accumulation of everything. And that's kind of what life is also, but you have to give yourself a daily pat on the back one, just for getting up and showing up. I feel like that's really important. People have to remember that that is in itself is a success and a win, get up, show up, do whatever, being able to push through whatever negativity you have in your life is huge. Um, uh, Kevin and I were talking, I, I have a friend who I worry about, uh, sometimes, um, in, in the sense of, 
if they are okay mentally and emotionally. And it's one of those things where it's hard to figure out the right way to broach a subject like that with somebody. And I'm still working on that every day. And uh, the success for me or that person is that every day that they're here to me is a success because I feel like a lot of people are in a place right now where they forget to look at positive things and they focus too many on negative things and that's going to hurt because that car is pulling out in front of them y'all sitting here i swear i'm going to watch just people slamming into people way too often um i think too many people focus on the negative and forget to look at the positive if you if you spend time looking for the positive things you won't have enough time to look for the negative things and the next thing you know the negatives won't be there because all you can see is the positive positive. and i feel like we all need to work on that myself too not you know we all need to work on that so yeah I don't know. That's it. Squirrel Trap 2.0. I just want to have that random little conversation like because even I need to remind myself that again, level of success today is different than five years ago. It will be different in five more years and it needs to be something that isn't measured against anybody else. I used to, when I would go to the gym, I would measure myself against other people. Um, was she lifting more than me? Uh, then I would try to do more. And that's just, that's just stupid. It needs to be for me, a hundred percent for me and not for anything else. And that's what I'm realizing in life that others opinions of me don't matter. Now I appreciate them obviously you guys, I love y'all. I appreciate you beyond all belief, but I can't let somebody's opinion of me sway my opinion of myself. And so when I go to the gym, I need to focus on doing things for me the way I want to do them. And it's not about, you know, am I keeping up with anybody or doing better than anybody else? It's all about the small little successes for myself. That's it. YouTube success, like I said, I don't really know what YouTube success is as long as at the end of the day you guys are happy and aren't feeling like you wasted your time here with me, then I feel successful on YouTube. That's that's what it means to me because views, the algorithm is stupid. The views are going down. Everything else is going down. But at the end of the day, I still feel like I am successful here because we have made this this family, this this YouTube Squirrel Tribe family, you know, and that means more to me than any kind of virality on YouTube. I don't want that shit because then you get the wrong people and I don't want that. I like our, 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 our group, (laughs) if you will. Um, y'all make me happy. So that's that. I'm gonna go take these things home to the child. So see if she'll take one of them and, uh, or use, eat one of them. It's a lollipop. I don't really know if you're supposed to take or eat a lollipop. I don't know. So there's that 2.0. I love you. Thank you for letting me have my random rant of whatever. Y'all know how I do some days. I just want to talk. I just need to get all out of my brain and out my mouth and out there to y'all. So I appreciate you for always letting me have that ability. You guys mean more to me than you even know. So thank you. I love y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.